All right, traders, hello, good evening. Welcome back, Connor. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm well, and guys, we apologize. It normally comes out Thursday. Um, we've had a few technical issues and things like that. We tried our very best, but it's Trade Talk episode 80, and we're here, and it's the weekend, and we're getting it done for everyone, for the few viewers that do watch the, uh, the channel. We do appreciate it. So, Connor, I've got your silver trade up here now. Um, yes. So the stop is still at two percent as well. So there's no there's no movement on the stop loss quite yet on this one. Or? No, I, I have moved it. I've moved it from roughly fourteen point six seven. Yes, no, apologies. Yes, yeah, yeah, oh. something like that, and I've moved it down to fourteen point five four. But I haven't moved it again, even though it's showing some more weakness at the end of the last. Uh, at the end of Friday, it finished quite weak. Um, but around about the fourteen dollar mark, fourteen point zero two eight. Yeah, so, each week, yeah, yeah. Yeah, depending on where JP Morgan <laughs> and the rest that's of right. those, that's the bank. <laughs> the good those, old boys, that's right. Yeah, uh, depending on where they want it to go, uh, it may have some more weakness. It's at um, it's at a really low level at the moment. Yeah, Scott. I'll bring the um weekly up. Just to, wow. Wow, wow, yeah, wow. so the gold to silver Ooh. ratio at the moment is something like one to eighty-four, meaning one. Uh, it will take you eighty-four ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Yeah, and traditionally, uh, historically, it's around about anywhere between the one and one to ten and one to fifteen sort of mark. So it's right out of the uh, standard deviation at the moment, and it's yeah really hitting some low lows. So. <clears throat> The weekly is very significant, though. Yeah. I mean, that is that's broken down. The last time it was this low, I've got it in. Um, it looks like very early uh, 2016, like in January. Wow! So I got the weekly. Yeah. yeah so that's. Uh, well, <laughs> can I, I have. Uh, I, I I know uh, I know someone who's in uh, in his 60s, sort of now. And he was talking about back when the, the Bunker Hunt brothers manipulated gold. He bought gold at uh, – no, not gold, uh, silver. He bought silver at $8 an ounce, and it went up to $35 an ounce, you know, within a few yeah. weeks of buying it. Uh, so – but, you know, you look back at that. That was in the – he bought that back in the 70s or something or early 80s. Yeah. And, and – you know, you look at now when you take uh, inflation into consideration, fourteen dollars is very cheap. And I've got the monthly chart up, so it sort yeah. of coincides with what you're talking about. So the very the high I've got here was in a uh, 2010, no 2011 on the yeah. monthly candle. The March candle closed at 49.28. And yeah. if you bring the monthly chart up, guys, we're looking at here where it is at currently is i mean this is very low this <laughs> well it, so it seems well, that there's you, a su support if here. you look at it if you look at it on the monthly you'll actually see in 2008 when the global financial crisis that silver took a pl plunge which is the opposite of what is supposed oh, yeah. to happen people are supposed to take their money out of uh out of business out of country and put it into precious metals however you know, not too long after uh, 2009, 2010, it really started to make its way up. There was obviously a lagging effect from the last global financial crisis yeah. until it went up. And it got right up, I think, what, what's it to? Yeah, to but nearly about $50 an ounce. Yeah, it did. And it got so, as low as, uh, I mean, 841 was the low back in 2008. It was the October, October candle. So on the month, yeah. <laughs> look at this. It's been quite the ride. And There's recently... Yeah, eight banks that have taken forty six percent of the silver trades. Yeah. The rest goes beyond. Uh, you know, this is on the COMEX market, and the rest is between uh, other banks um, and and just com uh, and just retail traders like you and I. Mm. But as an ETF, you know, it's obviously looking short. But as a physical asset, it's not yeah. too bad to be buying as a physical asset and holding your hand. But That's anyway, right. Yeah. Still. Well, the recent lows back in 2015, it was sort of like exactly nearly three years ago. Mm. Uh, well, the December monthly candle, the low was 1363. So if we can get sort of back down there yeah. again and it breaks down, then the last <clears throat> time 
I mean, we're talking 2009 was the last time we got lower than 1363. So yeah, for guys who are watching these sort of setups with gold, silver, um, you know, just be a little cautious if you like buying reversals because uh, it's just been so it's been sideways for a very long time as well on the monthly. I mean, we're talking. It's just really little candles, little candles. Just, but this recent little move down is very interesting. So, uh, want to watch here, guys? I would say now your USD CAD. We'll talk about as well. I've got yep. that up as well. So, it was an interesting mixed bag of the US dollar. <laughs> you know, strength and then weakness and then it's sort of. Well, it's. Int- I'll get the daily up and. Yeah, so you sold this, was it last week as well? Yeah, I sold uh, I took it on a four-hour. I think I took it on the Thursday. Oh, uh, yep, yeah. A four-hour of that long bearish candle. That was just a second shunt down that I thought, okay, this sucker has broken out and it may be going down further. Uh, at the moment, it's proving me wrong, but I've put my stop loss at 1.30909. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room at the moment to work with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to be honest, Scotty, I've been getting stopped out quite a lot. Uh, my last, I think about my last six trades, I've, I've taken a... a taken yeah, a, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> it's it's anyone's game. It's a, it's a hard sort of game uh, to analyse. It's always, uh, it's, it's, you just got to have your system, yeah, know you what yeah. your win rate is, know how much tolerance you can take, and hopefully over the long term, you're going to get that that 50% win rate with a 1.2 uh, plus yeah. average of 0.4. And, and you have average. those rare times when things really go and you flood the silver potentially and things like that really where you know the Aussie dollar, I'm still monitoring the Aussie dollar, even though I did get stopped out. If it goes back down to that key support there, it's still quite interesting because the inflationary pressures aren't really that strong in the uh, Australian economy compared to the US. And it's sort of, you know, people got a little bit little bit scared when, you know, the, the not so great US data came out earlier in the week, but it's still sort of back down again. So watch that. <coughs> um, but there's not really much, much else going on. The Kiwi sort of, I took that trade obviously earlier. Um, in the week as well, that's sort of recovered a little bit. But, you know, in regards to potential setups, there's not really too much. Is there anything you're sort of, you know, talking no, point-wise? No, it all, sort of, it all just sort of, as, uh, you know, traditionally or a lot of the time it happens, as you know, Scotty, things sort of tend to die down on a Friday. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, exactly. So I don't panic too much when, you know, if I've taken a buy trade, it starts to dip on a Friday or, or vice versa, these things kind of happen. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, that's true. I've so got... yeah, I was also looking at I was also looking at uh, uh, the US Japanese yen. Hopefully, if that thing can break out again on the four hour, I might be interested in taking. Oh some... yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I it just looked at the out. euro. I looked at the euro yen quickly, and that hasn't quite. Um, because we talked about that but in the previous video that we couldn't upload, but that's not quite... Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness me. The, uh, yeah, so there's the, been yeah. a breakout. Yeah, there's another, yeah. there's another shunt upwards. I'll probably be interested in that. However, the, you've got a, a support line up at uh, about one one two point one seven or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, there uh, is. Yeah. It's shoved up too much. I probably wouldn't be interested in taking... So it's one of those one of those things. Uh, um, yeah. Apart from that, technically, I'm not too interested in any of the markets. You were talking about. I mean, you were talking about the Australian dollar. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's just looking. I would say that it, I've got sort of got a bearish feel for that. You know, in the fundamentals, and you look at it technically. You know, over the past uh, probably six months, it's really taken a dive. I oh, think it was yeah. around about January. If you look, it was January. It's around 81 cents. Yeah. Now we're getting historical lows. We're getting. I think it hit the lowest low in two years or something. Yeah, it did. I but probably can't see it getting above 80 cents again for a, for a while. No, I think compared to the USDN guys, just based on the weekly count, the USDN's probably a bit better. Like, I mean, I'm just looking at the Aussie dollar on the weekly. I mean, the trend is 
it's pretty it's uh, undeniable. Yeah. <laughs> it's undeniably, yeah. Undeniably bearish. Yeah. Uh, we're talking before about, you know, there's no real sort of uh, issues of inflation going on. And if there is, mm. because of the... Uh, you know, the volatile housing market in Australia, I would say that the RBA would be sceptical yeah. of putting rates up, knowing that, you and know, so. we've got a really high percent of people who take only have, uh, you know, interest only loans. We've talked yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Well, like your friend said from Great Britain or wherever, that was pretty concerning when he, he you sort of said that to him. So, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, People around, unless you're Australian, people around the world don't get the concept of interest-only loan on a house. Like yeah. that's, that's crazy. That's yeah. that's the mental. And it's yeah, a bit of a so, gamble. It's a bit of a gamble. Well, that's right. We've got our we've got our uh, banks over here who have you know had a we're, uh, the royal in, in, inquest into yeah. A, yeah to what's been going on. And I the think banks, they don't mind a dodgy banking. <laughs> uh, Practice. No, that's Practice. right. Well, Stuff it sounds that... like there was a bit of a cowboy phase where they would almost just be like, just, yeah, you're fine. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they would alter things. And because there was another documentary on that on Four Corners on the ABC. Um, yeah. That was, yeah, where people would have their documentation altered to meet the, you know, criteria. And it was just like, wow, that's. Um, so it is. You got to be. You got to be careful, guys. If you're buying the reversals here, it's you know, it's um. You know, I got stopped out obviously, but I I was more four hour focused. So, but if you look more from a longer term perspective, it's probably a, a short here. I just saw the time though. Kind of, I do apologize. I think we might have to wrap it up. Yep. Anything oh, final words or that sort of summed it up no, nicely? No, I think that's good. I think that's good. I would say. Uh, final words would be that the Australian housing market is in a crisis form. Bam. All right, guys, we'll finish there. Thank you, Connor. And uh, uh, thanks, guys, for, for watching. Uh, bye for now. See you, Connor. Bye.